Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, welcome to Big Mex Workshop and Paint Studio and as promised uh, we are going to be doing a lighting effects or OSL which stands for on source lighting and we're going to use the monolith as the example for this because there's multiple parts to that that you can do different effects with um, we're going to take you through all three of them um, starting with this portal which is a really interesting feature of the model uh, a lot of people leave it plastic but we like to um, add some extra depth and detail to it now we're only using four colors we're starting with the black primer and we're gonna highlight the center of that using Caliban green now anyone who knows anything about an airbrush knows that it sprays in a cone so the thing is spraying out in the cone whatever the middle hits is going to be the most colored so what we're doing is going around the circle edge and just following that round I want to speed this up in a sec because you don't want to see me spray the whole thing and we're basically going to aim most of that spray towards the middle now this is just the base coat then we're going to move up to moot green by games workshop and do the same thing but a little bit more control this time small bursts with the airbrush you can do this with a brush you just um, wash and dry brush into the middle even glaze it into the middle if you want but those rough surfaces may be a bit of a pain as you can see I'm not really moving my airbrush at this point I'm just uh, spinning the thing around on a cork stand and as you can see that colour is starting to build up in the centre you can um, keep going with this up and down, up and down till you're happy with it. If you go too far with the milk green and you're not happy with that, just go around the edges with some Caliban green again to tone it back down. My favourite part of this video is probably the diamond because they always look diamond. It's a big crystal thing. I'm not 100% sure what it's called. Now what I'm doing there by turning it on its side is using the cone and it's going to miss all the shaded areas, leaving them the darkest because it's uh, because the cone disperses as it goes along like a spray can does so if you do it at the right angle you're only going to pick up the edges where the mist from the airbrush is starting to pick it up after you've done a milk green we're going to go to oh sorry the last one was warp stone glow my apologies then we're going to go to milk green because that's really illuminous by uh, games workshop and spray just solely in the center there so as you can see what happens is you've got Caliban green around the edges, you've now got your Warpstone glow around most of it and milk green dead in the centre and because they're done with the airbrush they spread out quite well and disperse leaving a really good blend for you. Now there's a lot more details on this and you could probably go further but the next colour I've been using is Escorpiana green by Game Colour. This is just a Games Workshop small dry brush and we're just going to start dry brushing the centre of it where the spiral is. And as you can see that's starting to pick up those colours. You don't have to dry brush all those ripples uh, but sort of pull the colour to the centre. If you do it a, a sort of random pattern it will look more like it's uh, swirling around and moving. Which is what we're trying to capture here, we're trying to capture the movement of this thing and the three dimensions which you just can't do if you leave it as a plastic piece. Well, one of these days I'm going to uh, make a Necron stencil for when I do this and put that over the centre and just tone it back down so there's a shadowed area in the middle so you can see a Necron coming out of the portal. Now the next one are the uh, pipes for the monolith. I'm not 100% sure what they are, I don't play Necrons. Well, I, I do, but I'm not up on the fluff for them. So again, we're going, this is a slightly different technique. Same colour palette all the way through this, but different techniques, ever so slightly different. I kept them on the sprue because that makes life a little bit easier. And again, we're going to start with the Caliban green, except this time, we're going to go in from the left hand side, then the right hand side, then we're going to do the front of them. You want to be careful that you don't go too far with your airbrush here, and... Um, spray too much on because it will run and I, I did realize while editing this that the uh, camera doesn't really pick it up so I threw in an extra part there as you can see by the time I finish this video my hands are extremely green uh, can't be bothered to be wearing gloves we just go through them too fast anyway paint comes off it's only acrylics 
but as you can, see, you can actually see here what I was talking about in the last clip going in from the right letting that dry a little bit going in from the left now it's it's easy for people to go okay I'm gonna do OSL and just blast a big spray of paint but what happens is you get your speckle in you get it's just not smooth at all guys so don't just use it like a spray can and uh, blast away there because it won't work as you can see I'm building those layers up very slowly and this is sped up but if you take your time with it it will look so much better as you can see this is the milk green I think yeah that's definitely a milk green and that goes in the in the middle so you start in with a, a wider cone for the Caliban and then a, a less wide cone as you can see my airbrush is getting closer and closer to the model because that makes the cone of the airbrush a little bit smaller every time going in from the right hand side then going in from the left hand side and that will build up the paint dead in the center of the thing and that's where your light source will start to build up you can use this technique to uh, airbrush anything else as well but with luminous and bright colors it uh, really gives a good OSL effect obviously when these are put in the monolith around the area where that's glowing I'm going to also give it a small highlight with the airbrush so it looks like it's glowing onto the other parts of the model now this is my favorite bit because once this is on the monolith um, it just looks great it really makes the monolith stand out and draws the eye to it this is the most complicated of all of them and needs a bunch more control but this one can definitely be done with a brush as well guys um, just taking your time watering it down what you need to be doing if you're using an airbrush for this is angling it right so the edge of the crystal in interrupts the cone you'll see what I mean because you'll see the paint going onto my hand why I'm spraying this and the Caliban green as always is dark so it doesn't show up very well on camera but we're going to start in the right hand corners of the crystal and build up those layers and because of that hard edge there you can see the green starting to build up on my hand it's interrupting that cone so it's not touching the other part you just want to make sure it doesn't run and we're going to do those these alternately the top parts you do the right corner the bottom parts you do the left hand side and I believe this is now warpstone glow see I'm, I'm deliberately spraying so I'm almost missing the part that I'm spraying and the overspray and what's left of the cone will pick up on the very edge of the model Now we're going to do the same thing again but these areas get smaller and smaller as you can see that's only picking up that corner because of the angle I'm holding the crystal at and that's your milk green again and once you start getting to the milk green on this it, it just really starts to pop so don't go over the top with the other colours thinking oh it's, it's too dark still because you want that really high contrast the higher the contrast there the better but it needs to be built up with three or four different paints otherwise it's just not going to look right very time consuming doing one of these crystals like this it take even longer with a brush I think it took me like an hour or something to do this one now obviously it's a bit dark and it's got nice sharp edges so we're just going to use that fourth colour again which was a Scorpiano green by game color and we're just going to edge highlight that take your time with it I'm using the Winsor Newton series 7 but that's just my preference because I like the level of control I have and then when you've done all these edges this thing's done you can double edge highlight it if you want by mixing some white or some Rakar flesh into the Escorpiana green and do the finest points but I didn't really deem it necessary for this uh, particular crystal I was painting so I hope this helps you guys with all your uh, lighting effects and things like that and if you've got a monolith army I mean a monolith a Necron army then um, I hope that helps you build in that if you like these videos hit like comment subscribe and check out our other social media and we'll catch you on Thursday guys